first let's join all of these propeller blades. So shift click and hit control J to turn them into one object and then we'll parent them to the spinner um, by shift clicking the spinner and hitting control P. And now we've made one. Uh, now these two objects can be moved by moving the one object. Parenting is a big deal in 3D modeling and rigging. Okay. You can spin the propellers by spinning the spinner, by rotating the spinner. Okay. So these are our flaps, our elevator, and our rudder. Just nice, simple, easy, mechanical rigging. All right, we have the plane here and everything's parented to the fuselage. Let us add, shift A, add an armature and a single bone. Okay, this is a single bone. And then we're gonna rotate it negative 90 on the X. And then come over here to your properties panel and in the visibility display, click in front. And now you'll be able to see the bone in front of our model. And then we can name it uh, down here in the bone properties. You can name it whatever you want to. This is our main bone, so I'm going to call it main. Now, same thing as we do with objects and meshes. Shift D to duplicate and then bring it back on the Y, scale it down a little bit, and then line this up with our rudder. Okay, and this is going to be our rudder bone. All right, and then you can come down to bone and you can just change the name to rudder. All right. Once you have that lined up, let's select this particular bone again, shift D again, bring it down on the Z axis and then over on the X axis and uh, align this with our elevator. Okay. And this is going to be our elevator bone. And what do you think we're going to call this bone? If you guessed elevator dot left, you'd be right. Okay. And this is important here. Uh, you have to write dot left or dot capital L. Um, and when we symmetrize that, uh, you'll see what I'm talking what you'll see why we need to do that. Blender is, is great here with uh, bone symmetry. Okay. So let's shift D to duplicate that again, bring it up on the Y axis over on the X axis and down a little bit on the Z to create our flap. And you can see that there's an angle here of the flap and you're going to want to create that angle as well. Okay. And then in the same way we did elevator dot left, you are also going to want to name this bone flap dot left. Okay. And uh, that's essentially it. Well, we still need to do the landing gear. Let's, uh, let's select everything with a, and you'll see our entire, all of the bones in our armature are now selected. If you right click and hit symmetrize wherever you had dot left or dot L blender gives you, uh, its counterpart and it calls it flap dot right. So we gave it flap dot left blender gives us flap dot right and elevator dot right. Um, I didn't do the landing gear there, so I'm going to make one more bone and rotate it uh, 90 over the X axis, scale it down and just align this with my landing gear. Now I have landing gear and a wheel that are parented and uh, I'm going to line this up with, there we go, and call this landing gear dot left right click, symmetrize, and just like that, Blender gives me landing gear dot right. Okay, and uh, just like that, we have, uh, we, we have our plane armature. Save your work, okay? Now, with all of our armature, what we need to do is tell Blender what we want uh, our mesh to, to do with our bones, okay? Now, select everything in our armature and then double click on the main bone. So the main bone is lit control P and keep offsets. So now you have parented all the bones in your armature to the main bone in your armature. Capiche. Okay. So with our flap selected, come over here into the data properties and select the flap dot left bone. Okay. And then tab into edit mode and make sure you have the whole flap selected. And then with the flap dot left bone selected, click assign. Okay. And then do the same thing for the elevator in object mode, select the elevator, 
tab into edit mode, make sure all of the elevator is selected, and then find the elevator.left bone and click assign. Okay. And then the same thing for uh, the rudder. Okay. Tab into object mode, select the, uh, the rudder object, tab into edit mode, so make sure it's completely selected, select the rudder bone, click assign. And now we're telling these objects to match up with these bones. Okay. And then same thing with the landing gear, select all the landing gear in object mode, tab into edit mode, make sure everything is selected and then go over here and find the landing gear dot left bone and assign it. So now we have bones that are uh, assigned to specific parts of our plane. Okay. So let's kick over into pose mode, right? And you should see it light up blue. Blue represents pose mode. Let's hit N and go up into item and mess with the rotation. Now you can see quaternion rotation. We don't want that. We want X, Y, Z, Euler. Okay. Um, and we only want this to rotate on the Z axis. If it rotates anywhere, um, you can see if you just hit R to rotate, it's, it's wonky. You don't want that. We want to isolate this on the Z axis. So we're going to lock all of the other axes so it can only move on the Z axis. This is, well, this is, this is called a constraint. There are other ways to add constraints, but rigging is a lot of constraints. Same thing with our elevator. XYZ Euler, and now we want to lock this on the X axis. Okay. We only want this thing to rotate on the X axis. It's very mechanical, right? That's why we're doing this first, right? It's, it's, it's non-threatening. So lock everything and then do the exact same thing to the elevator, right? XYZ Euler, and then lock all the other axes except for X. And I'm just clicking and dragging. Okay. And then let's take care of the flap. All right. Same thing. Quaternion to X, Y, Z, Euler. Lock everything except the X. And there we go. And now it rotates along the X. We're going to do the same thing with the flap on the right. And quaternion versus Euler. Uh, quaternion is good for smooth and continuous animation. X, Y, Z, Euler is just, it's good for, uh, good for simple which is exactly what we're trying to do. And then the landing gear, we want it to move on the Z axis. So same thing. And you can see right here, it, it, the landing gear just kind of absorbs into the bottom of the wing. If, if this we're having fun, so it's not that big of a deal, but if we wanted this to be correct, we would obviously need to hollow out a portion in the underwing into which our landing gear might fit, you know, keep that in mind. Okay. Now let's, uh, let's animate the propeller and I'm not going to rig this. I'm going to animate this. There's a bunch of different ways you can, you can do this. And I, but the reason I'm distinguishing these is because I want them to be separate things. I want them to be two separate things. So I just made that a timeline at the bottom. Okay. And I'm going to rotate the spinner on the Y axis over here. Okay. If you click I, you can insert a keyframe. You should see the first frame turn yellow. Okay. And then move up five frames and type 360 on the Y and tap I again. And you should now have two keyframes. Okay. One on the, the first frame, one on the fifth frame. And you've inserted two keyframes. And that's what those yellow dots represent. So now if you scroll, you're going to see that propeller does 360 degrees a 360 degree turn in those five frames. All right. Which is great. Uh, we also want that to repeat itself. So hit shift E inside the timeline and go down to make cyclic. So now this thing's just going to repeat until the end of time. So if you hit play, there we go. Just like that. We've animated our spinning propeller, which is wonderful. Um, you will notice that it's, kind of, it's a, it's a mechanical turn. Okay. It's, uh, our eyes don't see propeller spins like this. We see a motion blur. We see like a blurred propeller, but in the world of computer graphics, where the precision is everything we only see, it's, it's really kind of a choppy mechanical turn. We want to change that. So, uh, let's head over into cycles and then scroll down and just click on motion blur. Okay. Which is great. So now when we render this thing out, you're going to see a blurred 
propeller. Um, and just to show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to render out one frame just at random. You can pick anyone you want. I'm just going to pick the 168th frame just because I can. And uh, you're going to want to take note the, the world setting, right? If I render this out, the background is just going to be gray. Blender gives us some default HDRIs and that's what I'm going to use. So if you click on, so uh, go over to world right there and then click on go to environment texture and then open and then go to wherever you have blender saved on your machine click on the version and then click data files and then world and then find whichever one you had i think i'm using forest okay so now uh the forest hdri is going to be included in my render and uh, just to show you what I'm talking about, there we go. So there's the motion blur and there's our HDRI, but you also saw that the background was included and I don't want that at all. So let's go up to render settings and then scroll down to film and click transparency. Okay. And now that'll remove the generic photo background. So I'll only get the lighting and there you go. Okay, so we have a plane. You now we have the nice HDRI lighting that came included with Blender, and we have our motion blur. And obviously, don't worry about the texture of the plane. This is, it, it's generic. We haven't put too much time into it at all. We'll deal with the texture of the plane in due time. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found some value in it and realized rigging is not as scary as, as a lot of people think it is. Um, and in the next one, we're gonna animate this son of a gun. So get up, get a bend, get a stretch, and we will see you in the next one.